but I'm kind of a big deal. He could go all the way. Playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Oh, boys! I'm back! Everybody get up. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the BS Report. John Stanker here with Kevin Bartnett in the bottom of La Penta here in WICR. How are you doing this fine evening, Kevin? I'm smiling, Vic. We finally won a game. Yes, you we did. We finally won a game. Feels phenomenal. You beat the Minnesota Vikings. How does that make you feel? We, we, you know what? It feels you feel good that we held that stud Adrian Peterson to doing nothing. Y yeah. All right, you want to delve right into the Giants game? Yeah, why not? I have a big problem with the Giants taking so much credit for the win. I'm just saying that the Minnesota coaching staff basically handed you that victory. Why? Because they, they let Josh Freeman throw the ball 53 times. His second week with the team, no way he knows the entire playbook. They let him throw the ball 53 times. 53 times. That's I agree. For less, he threw for less than 200 yards, and he threw the ball 53 times. I agree that that's very absurd, obviously. I, I couldn't agree more. But at the same time, the Giants held Adrian Peterson to what, like 56 yards rushing? Oh, uh, that's 28 not a, yards rushing. 28 yards. Even better. I thought he had 28 carries. I must have misread it. That's not a fluke when you hold Adrian Peterson to 28 yards. You don't do that by design. On any given play, he can run for 28 yards. No. I No. Okay, I'm not going to let the Giants got the win. Congratulations. You beat a team whose offense looked on par with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, no, it was horrible. Don't get me wrong. Josh Freeman was dreadful. Was I can't believe he threw the ball 53 times. But the, uh, I'm giving the Giants credit because you hold Adrian Peterson to 28 yards, no matter how bad. Christian Ponder, only Christian the ball Ponder was a times. terrible quarterback last year. They made the playoffs because Adrian, Pe Adrian Peterson had a good game every single game. He only Adrian carried Peterson, the ball 13. Times he had his worst game in two years because they only gave him the, ball the coach never gave him the ball 13 times. Well, because they were down the whole game, they had to throw the ball. It doesn't matter. AJ Pearson should run the should run the Wildcat every single play for Minnesota, and they'd have a better chance of winning than letting a quarterback throw the ball. I give them credit big time for stopping Adrian Pearson. Adrian Pearson last year could run for 13 carries, he probably could have had not, almost 100 yards last year. For basically for having 13 carries in a game. He would have been close to 100 yards on his for his averages, the way he's been playing the last two years especially. I Listen, the Giants got the win. Congratulations. You are now Oh, but they just they get no credit for, for stopping you. I'm sorry, you beat yards. Minnesota. You, you're still in my bottom five of power rankings in the NFL because you beat Minnesota. I don't... I, I don't uh, they're, they, they're one and six, okay? They're one and six. They're not a good football team. I'm just thrilled because they stopped the great, big, bad Adrian Peterson. That's why. You can knock them all you want. People, I know, you're not a Giants fan. You hate giving them credit. People hate giving Giants no, credit. I give, you, I give you credit when you deserve it. I, don't, I just don't think that your defense they're, should be saying, oh, we stop AP. Ugly, it was an ugly game. You don't, you, don't hear, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. Like I mean, I'm thrilled that we actually won a game. That's why. Mm -hmm. You don't hear me saying we're going to the playoffs now or anything. Oh, God, please, no. I'm not like that. Don't get me wrong <laughs> in that department, okay? I mean, the division is so bad, after all, you know, we couldn't know what could happen. I'm just kidding, obviously, but we'll get to that. Let's see what happens when you guys play the Eagles next week. Big game. Big game, it really is. But when you hold this big, bad AP all day, Peterson, seriously, to 28 yards rushing, that's a good performance on any okay. level. It's a, it's a, just because Freeman couldn't throw the ball. You can't give all the credit to the defense. You can't. You have to give some credit to how bad the play calling was for Minnesota when you only hand the ball off to AP 13 times. Out of the 20 plays that are always planned out at the start of every NFL game, 15 of those should be handing it off to AP. That's, that's the way Minnesota should run their offense because they have nobody else. All right, Stanko, let's see if you agree with this, though. 13 yards, though. On any given play, Peterson could run double the run total on any given play of those 13 carries. Yes, I agree. He's more than capable yes, of that. Yes, I agree. So He's the fact more than that they actually that. stopped him to 28 yards on 13 carries, okay, you they held up barely over two yards a carry. What's he averaging in the last two years? Five to six yards a carry? 
It doesn't matter because uh, you he only carried the ball 13 times. Yes, you stopped him. He was him. not having a good game. You though. stopped him 13 times. That's because Minnesota didn't let him have a good game. Sometimes, sometimes the running backs got to get warmed up. Well, okay. First off, the Giants, if you don't remember, had the ball from like in the six minutes left to go in the third quarter. They held the ball to like uh, to like the with 13 minutes know, and ball, to go. Yeah, they held. They had that ball. He and then they had a, what? They had the seven, uh, 16 point lead. Mm-hmm. He he couldn't run the ball in the fourth quarter really very much. He, I think he had one carry in the fourth quarter because they were down by 16 points. I don't care how bad your quarterback's playing. You're going to have to throw the football. You have to throw the football if you're down by that many points in the fourth quarter. Maybe if they got a score, Freeman was awful. I couldn't agree more. But He had 16 over like overthrown balls. 16 overthrown he was, he balls. He was dreadful. He was dreadful. Amount. I am not saying that. I'm not saying he played decent on any level because that may have been the worst quarterback performance I've seen since Ryan Lindley against the Jets last year. Okay, now, now, all right, I want Adrian Peterson, we can agree, is the best running back in the NFL. Yes, absolutely. Best running back in the NFL. Yes. The Minnesota only got him 15 touches. 15, that's it. Yeah, he should he should get more. He should get at least 25. He should at get more. At least 25. He should. I, I'm not disputing that. I really am not. But he did not have a good game. And I give the Giants credit. He didn't for that. have a chance to have a good game when he only touched the ball 15 times. Oh, that's more than oh, that's more than most running backs have in a game nowadays. You put him on Green Bay, he'll never get the ball. He all they'll do is have him run screens. Well, that's the thing. AP is your best offense weapon, and they only got him 15 touches. I'm saying the Giants. In the second had, half, though, they could not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In the second half, they can't give him the ball though because they were throwing him a screen so pass. They did. They tried. He got nothing. He, he only did. caught two passes. You can't say they tried when he only was targeted four times. They. They did try. I'm telling you, they did try. The Giants always had people on. He was only targeted four times. Stenko, I watched every play of every game. Pretty uh, much they're just on three. I watched, and he fumbled at the end of the game, too, but the Giants didn't challenge it because they were going to win. If you don't race, he also fumbled, too, well, at the end. He has a fumble problem. He's a great running back, but he does have a fumble problem. He did problem. fumble at the end of the game, too. Well, so did Payne Hillis. Oh, he fumbled way in the beginning of the game, though, but he picked it up, and the Giants actually recovered it, but eh. He, re- he recovered his own fumble. Payne Hillis did, yes. Payton Hillis, who. Who 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 would have thought in the world he would have had five catches for forty five yards? Exactly. Where did that go? He had a better game than AP because the Giants let him have a better game because they actually trusted him with the ball. They had to trust him with the ball because they were up by sixteen points. They had to kill the clock. No, they I, had to do it, and listen, they have to do it because they don't have any other. The Giants backs. deserve partial win, partial credit for the win. Partial credit also goes to the awful coaching in Minnesota. I'm not disputing that Minnesota could, should have had a better game plan. I'm just I'm just thrilled that it's. When you hold Adrian Peterson to 28 yards, and no matter how many carries he gets that are more than 10 yards, he got more than 10 carries. You, He had double-digit carries, and you hold him to 28 yards on double-digit carries. That's a good... You're doing something right. You did something right for you that amount of time. something right. But the offensive coordinator has to... Whoever's calling the plays for Minnesota has to know that 13 carries, he can bust one open. Why didn't they feed him the ball more often? Freeman was... When you're throwing on first down in your Minnesota, you're doing something wrong. Usually by the 13th carry, Fre- Peterson has a big run by then. He does. That's a fact. Usually by the time he has 13 carries, he has big runs by then. Is there any stat to, to prove that? I wish there was, honestly. I, but th- I mean... Uh, we're just going on general knowledge. Like, the first carry of the year he had was a 7 8 yard touchdown, yeah. That was his highlight of the year so far. Yeah. I mean, he may be not in the best state right now, obviously, because of the tragic death of his son. He may not be in the best state, but... I mean, but... Th- I'm not... I'm not... I'm, I'm sorry. I'll let you finish your point, actually. I'm sorry. No, no. It, it's fine. It's fine. It's just that I just... I can't... Again, the Giants fans, you're happy, and good for you... Your offense played fine, too. Eli Manning didn't throw an interception. Thank God. First time this season, right? He didn't throw oh, an interception? Yeah, absolutely. First time this season. He only, he only threw the ball for 200 yards. He only averaged five yards a, a throw. But, I mean, that was what you guys needed to do to win. But, I mean, I can't, listen, the Giants fans are happy. Giants defense deserve some credit, but also some credit goes to Minnesota and their coaching staff for being They're not a good football team. Right? It's that simple. I think they're going back to Ponder, honestly. I think they should go back to Ponder. No, they already announced him he's starting next week. Ponder? No. Freeman. Really? That's a bad. That's not a Leslie good move. Leslie Frazier already announced. Not a that. good move because honestly, like, I, I, if you game plan with Ponder, that means you give the ball to AP more. If that should be the smart game plan, that really is. Freeman's not cut out for the system. I don't think. I mean, Freeman's not cut out for anything. Chris Carter this morning, absolutely laid into Josh Freeman. Said he should be cut from the Minnesota Vikings. Said he shouldn't be a quarterback on any team. Nothing. Also, I really don't like Chris Carter as an analyst. I really don't. Uh, I don't think he's very smart. I think he thinks just as he played the game that he he's like so much smarter than everybody, which is I don't I, I disagree with because you know most NFL GMs did not play the game. Mm-hmm. They weren't like pros or anything. So 
He thinks just because he, he played the game, he's a great talent evaluator. No, I, I don't really like Chris Carter as a... So I wouldn't take what he says seriously. If it was <laughs> someone like Trent Dilfer, who was smart, then I would. But Trent Dilfer also laid into him on Monday night after the game. Trent Dilfer did. But Trent Dilfer is logical, and he backs his stuff up. Chris Carter just speaks in... I, I, if you haven't realized by now, I'm not very a fan of many ESPN analysts, honestly. I'm really not. I mean, they have smart guys like Ditka and... See, best, I don't like Ditka. Their best, their best hire was Bill Polian. That Bill Polian is fantastic. That was their best hire. He's I fantastic because he, he knows what he's doing. That's why he's did it. Like he knows what he's doing. So, and obviously they have guys like Schefter, but you know, I, I don't like Ditka. I'm surprised you like Ditka. Uh, I don't like. I him. think Ditka brings an old school feel to it. That's him and Tom Jackson bring like the old school into it. Like See, into like the very new school. I don't NFL. mind Tom Jackson, but I Ditka to me he he always speaks in two sentences. He never like goes in depth. He's just like, this is what's going to happen, and this is why. And I'm done. Huh. Yeah, but that's just his style, I would assume, though. I mean, they said he was like that a lot as a coach, obviously. He just got his point across. He gets a, he does get his point across very quickly as an analyst. Very, very succinct. Very, so, very succinct indeed. Yeah. I mean, we probably don't want to know what he was saying in the locker room when he was the coach of the Bears, but... Probably yeah, not. But, not not yeah. Michigan consistent with Iona College all right. Radio. Well, all right. That does that on the Giants, but there was another game being played in MetLife Stadium on Sunday... You must have been so high, Stanko, after the Red Sox won on Saturday night to go to the World Series. And then the Patriots. Lay it on me, Stanko. Lay it on me. All right. My take on the game is this. The first half, the Patriots dominated. I think, I think we can both agree the first half belonged to New England. Uh, their defense played really well. The second half belonged to the Jets. They took the second half, and the game went into overtime. Let's get into overtime, shall we? Yes. Can I make one thing, though, just before we what? get into overtime? What's that? Tom Brady did not play good at all in the second half. No, Geno Smith outplayed Tom Brady in the second half. I'm Tom not Brady, I, I cannot. I mean, I was shocked. He was overthrowing people very yep, much. I agree. I, and I'm not you can't win this game on the receivers whatsoever. Nope. Many times he's been cut, up, cut in slack. Except for in the second half when Rob Gronkowski missed the ball because he lost it in the sun. Oh, yes, that's true. And, but that was a perfect Gronk throw, and almost, he's just like, Gronk Whoa. almost bailed him out and bailed Brady's bad throw. That one-handed that, that grab. Been, that would have been the catch of the year. I jumped up, and I was like, oh, my, no. That would have been the so catch of the year if he so caught that. He jumped over a guy, and he would have caught it with one hand. He almost bailed. That was a bad throw by Brady. It was a bad throw by Brady. He made a lot of bad throws. I was like, I mean, I'm not saying it's a sign of bad things to come, but you can't pin this one on the receivers. No, I'm not. No, yeah. Brady did not play well in the second half. Geno Smith outplayed him in the second half. I'm not going to deny let's, that. All right, now let's go to overtime, definitely. But um, overtime, Patriots get the ball. They don't do anything with it. Jets get it, and there's they get the, they march down the field, and they get stalled on a 56-yard field goal attempt. Everyone knows 56-yard field goals. It's, it's a long-range field goal. Nick Folk has not made above a 50-yarder this entire season. His season he high made, was 48. He's made, he made every single field goal, though. He has made every single field goal, but 56 yards, that's that's a task even Janikowski would have trouble with, or Legatron. Huh. But So he kicks it. It goes wide left. It, it was, I thought it was good for a second, actually. It, it was. I guess they went, and then yeah. started swerving. That penalty. And then there's this penalty. There's this penalty flag on the on the ground. And um, I look at the play. They show replays of it when the refs are discussing, and I don't see a penalty. It, I don't know why it's called unsportsmanlike conduct. We'll get. Yeah, we'll get to that. And then I was watching with my friend Mike Ritz, Steve Colzo. They're like, I, Mike Ritz is like, I don't see a penalty. Steve's a Jets fan, so he's like, Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. But I'm like, we don't see a penalty. And then they call this. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on number 74 of New England for pushing a lineman forward, and then therefore that's safety hazard. So the so it's a penalty on New England for putting the offensive lineman in safety. That's why the NFL made that rule. I looked up what I looked up to is I went to Mike Pereira on Twitter right away, and mm -hmm. Mike Pereira, Mike Pereira is probably like was been one of the best hires. He's in television. very very good I'm on not, Twitter. I think I I don't I mean of course whenever the Giants seems like have a call it seems like he says he goes against Giants, but. That's the way it seems. He's very good, though. He is very, I went very to him, good. He said that that was the correct call. But he mm -hmm. says, in reality, if he was still, I forgot what his exact job was. I believe he was, like, vice president or something, mm -hmm. president yeah. of the refs or something. If he was still that, they would, he would have denied that rule because that, that play had literally nothing to do with that is him my missing the kick. Point it's it's exactly. one thing if Christian Jones pushes him and it, it, it uses enough force where the guy there can block it, can and he blocks it, and it affects, and it affects that. Exactly, that's one thing. Exactly, this, it had nothing to do with it. Exactly, that. apparently that was the correct call. I'm not, I'm not denying that it's a penalty based off the rule. I'm not denying it's a penalty. I'm not going to say, oh, they, they just made the wrong call because they made the right call. But it's a stupid. My call. problem is, it's a stupid. Rule. You make that call for literally the first time in NFL history. That call is made. Yes, you make it in time. overtime. Maybe it's a Jerome Boger to call it, too. Yeah, in overtime, 
in a division game with rivals, you call that penalty. In my mind, that's like calling a tic tac foul in the last second of a basketball game to give the winning free throws to the other team. That's exactly what Bill went Belichick through my mind. Is known from, he doesn't show a lot of emotion. On oh, he was night. pissed, and he was livid. He I'm, was livid. He was pissed. And for, listen, again, it, it's it's a penalty, but you do not call that type of penalty in that in that spot in the game. You don't do it. You don't let penalties dictate the game. That goes for any sport. Basketball, we see it all the time with a late foul. That's that's controversial. If it's not blatant, you don't call it. I, Nobody would have noticed that penalty if the ref didn't draw attention to it. Nobody. They just circle it on the TV for them to see it. You know, I wouldn't have been shocked if they wanted the Jets to win this game, the ref, honestly. To keep to maybe keep this tight. The Jets hadn't beaten the Patriots since we were freshmen in college. Mm -hmm. And it's been great. It's been great. <laughs> but... I, there's some something, something's a little a little fishy here because why would you call that now and then gave the they basically gave the Jets a game they did and I'm not taking anything away because you know the kids Geno Smith I mean how anybody Listen, would think, he was impressive he how was anybody very could impressive. think that Sanchez had a chance I mean would think they were better off with of Sanchez compared to Geno Smith you I don't know, know my father pointed me out to this pointed this out to me you know who's not getting enough credit for the Jets who's that at all Marty Morningweg yes Marty Morningweg yes. the offensive coordinator he was yes. a long time coordinator with Andy Reid they're actually throwing the ball more than 20 yards down the field he has done wonders with Geno. Smith. I think Geno Smith is going to be. I won't say he's going to be a star. He's going to be very like, capable quarterback. I see him probably. as like an Andy Dalton type he's of quarterback. Done, he does right the now. rookie mistakes, obviously, but he's been impressive in a lot. I see him on the pathway of like an Andy Dalton. He's one I'm impressed by him because he's fast, obviously. Oh yeah. He's a smart runner, though. He's not like Kaepernick or Russell Wilson, where they just run whenever or they want. Or RG3, yeah. Or RG3, when they can just run whenever they want. He's a smart runner. He only runs when he has to run. Or it's necessary. His pocket presence did impress me at the time. Because the Patriots had good outside pressure all game long. They were collapsing that pocket, but he was stepping up. How anybody could think that Sanchez, though, they were better off with Sanchez over Geno Smith. I have no Geno idea. Smith, Geno Smith has won a couple of games for the Jets. He, he His legs won him the game in Tampa Bay, the game in Sam Bay, because it, it allowed Levante David to make that bonehead play. Mm -hmm. He beat Atlanta. He was did wonders in Atlanta. Yep. And I think he actually played. He was the reason why he outplayed the Jets Brady. won. He, no, he did outplay Brady. But in, the reason the Jets won this game is because of that penalty. That that is the Jets. The Jets missed that 56 yarder. Patriots would have gotten the ball. I believe it was would have been like position. like the 45 yard line or something like that. And we were 20 yard or 30 yards. We're in field goal range. You know what? I think that I don't. I still think the Patriots honestly were the better team. I think one bad throw by Brady and then Antonio Allen made it. That was a great play by Antonio Allen. The what? pick six. Oh yes, the pick yes. six. Um, do you know? Like, see, like Gino did make a bad throw, obviously, which. Uh, Logan Ryan ran it back to the mm -hmm. house. So, yep. Um, you know, it it was a very good game. Uh, it was a very good football game. It was the most entertaining game besides the Sunday besides the Sunday night game, which we'll get into. Yeah. Um. But I mean, I'm just I'm not angry that the that it's that like we got jipped off penalty because it was the right call. I'm just angry at the way we lost that game because frankly we might have deserved to lose that game, but it's the way we lost it. I thought the that Patriots should have so won. Angry. I thought they should have won. I mean. Listen, it can go either way. It was a very evenly played game, especially in the second. I mean, Patriots owned the first half, Jets yeah. owned the second half. Overtime, it was it, best two out of three. Whoever wins the the periods wins. But I mean, it it baffled my mind that they would make that call at that time. And the Jets tipped them off to it too. It was reported that they warned the refs that the Patriots do this. Yes, yeah, so I was just reading this article yes. right, like a couple minutes ago. Actually. No, like credit goes to the Jets coaching staff for pointing that out because if you knew that rule. I mean, good for you because, I mean, that's good coaching. I'm not going to deny that. I mean, I know other coaches do it too, so it's not it's like, it's like not cheating or anything because every coach but, goes yeah, to the refs and say, oh, you should, you should watch out for this. Leave it to Rex Ryan to make a fuss about it. Exactly. Though. The thing is that... He was probably so tired of losing the Patriots. There is a video of a Jets player doing that exact same play earlier in the game. And yeah. if you go to other games, Boston Barstool has been putting up GIFs of the same play with the same thing happening in other games that are not just the New England Jets game. Yeah, It's just... Listen, it's a penalty. I guarantee you that get, that penalty gets called now way more often. A, a lot of times, what's well, a penalty? You know, it's a rule. It's a penalty if you push your own player forward. So every time a running back's trying to get in the end zone line and push him in, it's a penalty. Trying to push him in. Is that a really a penalty? Yeah, it's supposed to be a penalty. I didn't know that. Remember the Bush push in USC Notre Dame? Oh, that yeah. Should, should have been a penalty in Reggie Bush. You're not allowed to do that. But. Well, I mean, listen, that penalty is now going to be called so much more often because it now it's now it's got the attention, so coaches are going to be, like oh, look for, that, look for that, like look for that, look for that, look for that, exactly. And whoever says the Patriots don't get a penalty called against them now is crazy. Because that, I mean, listen, that's the riskiest, that's the most ridiculous penalty so far this season. Hands down. At that point in the game. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I, was, I really agree. I was 
irate, but I stayed silent because I was in the Heinz Athletic Center, so I could not be loud and boisterous. Huh. So I just colored myself in a hoodie and just <laughs> went on my laptop and just went and started doing homework to release really stress. Been I would have been outraged. I would have been outraged. I really would have been outraged. All right, but anyway, that does that for the Giants and Jets. Now, anyway, under the most talked about game this past Sunday. Well, let's take a break first, then we'll go into that game. You want to take a break? You want to take let's a break? Let's take a break first. I need to relieve some tension in my voice because well, I'm still very... You do that, Stanko. All right, we're going to take a short break here on WICR. This is the BS Report with John Stanko and Kevin Barnett. We'll be right back after this short music break. 